Let's go ahead and add a two-car garage to our A-frame house. And keep in mind that these assembly methods might not work in your area. And there are other ways to attach a two-car garage to an A-frame house. And I will be providing you with a couple of more examples of that in our series. So here we're going to use a roof cricket to provide the drainage we're going to need so that water doesn't accumulate in this area. And for those of you who live in areas where it snows, this might not be the best method either. And we're just taking a quick tour here of the building. I like to show you what it's going to look like and then tear it apart and show you how it might be assembled. Now we are going to move the garage an inch and a half away from the A-frame building. And the reason for that had to do with my original blocking I was going to use. And I will also go over that in a future video as to why I didn't use that blocking. And you can always move your garage farther away or closer. And I had to add another section of the rafter over here so that we could have some backing for the sheathing and fascia board. And you can see here where the rafters on this side are cut different than the ones in between the garage and the building. And another thing this garage is not going to have will be a door going into the house or a door going into the backyard. And the reason for that was because the garage ceiling was a little low, almost too low for comfort to allow a door to be installed in between the garage and the house. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the walls in a future video and put a door in. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the blocks to provide you with a better view of the rafters. And since I left a gap here, we might need to install some type of screening or some type of a board to block, prevent rodents from coming into the this section of the building. And the block is going to reduce or prevent any ventilation here. This is where a screen might work better. However, I will leave that up to you. Sometimes you put a screen in and that isn't enough, especially for smaller insects. It might prevent a raccoon from going in there, but it's not going to prevent small insects from entering that area. Next up, let's take a look at the wall framing here. For those of you who need more information on how this particular garage is built, go to the website, click on the garage building link, and you will find a bunch of different designs for a two-car garage. You don't need to just stick with this one. Next up, let's go ahead and install our ceiling joist. And these are going to be 24 inches on center. And if you're going to install drywall, you might want to space them 16 inches on center. And if you notice, I lined up the ceiling joist so that they would connect to the rafters and position the roof rafters so that they would connect to all of the rafters in the A-frame, providing us with a nice solid structural connection between the A-frame house and the garage and I will be providing you with a different example of connecting that together in a future video and in case I didn't mention it the roof rafters will be spaced 24 inches on center in the a-frame and in the garage and our backing board here will provide us with some nailing for a 2x4 we're going to attach on top of the roof sheathing to fill this area in here so that we could install our siding or stucco, whatever our wall covering is going to be. And you can always bolt these together like we did with the rafter ties here. Or I would imagine you could use at least six to eight 16 D nails to fasten these two boards together along with your ceiling joist or rafter ties to the rafters. And you might need to put a little more thought into how you're going to lay all of these rafters out so that they connect together and work well with the roof sheathing. Now I chose to install this rafter on top of the sheathing instead of setting it on top of the rafter. And that's going to have more to do with having the roof sheathing on this building here work out a little bit better than it would have if I notched around it. And we're going to go ahead and install some blocks here, 2x4, 2x6, whatever you feel like you need to use. And the upper section of the blocks will be shaped a little bit. However, these blocks could also be installed a little different if you don't feel like shaping them. And of course, our rafter blocks in the garage will be shaped to provide us with a nice, tight structural connection between the sheathing, rafters, and the blocks. 
Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. We are going to extend the sheathing over a little bit so that we can install our wall here. And I like to have my wall sit on top of the sheathing. You could always set the lower framing plate on top of the backing or the roof rafters. And you could always install some additional support backing up here too. Attach a 2x4 to the bottom of the rafter here if you're looking for a little more nailing at the upper section of the framing studs. Next up, let's go ahead and install our lookouts and our fascia board. And you might need a larger gap between the fascia board and the roof sheathing depending upon how you're going to finish the roofing and you can see here where we have a little bit of nailing we can always move these blocks over a little bit if we want more nailing to attach the roof sheathing to these blocks and you can always put a block here again depending upon how this area is going to be finished with your roofing materials. Next up, let's go ahead and pan out, get a view of the roof and the fascia board here. And of course, we're going to have the same situation on this side that we had on the other side. A view from the back. And you can see here where it wouldn't be difficult to put a door in either over here or over here if you wanted a door going into the backyard. Next up, let's go ahead and install the roof sheathing. And then we can go ahead and lay out our roof drainage cricket and install the shaped support rafters here. And we're going to space these two foot on center so that we can get some nice solid nailing into the existing rafters that are also spaced 24 inches on center. And I do have more videos on how to build a roof cricket if you're looking for that, need a little more information on that. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at a different type of roof that will shed a little bit of the snow easier than in the previous example. And there were a few comments in the previous example that suggested what a horrible design it was. And I'm not going to argue with that. I'm just trying to provide different ideas in the video for people who might be building something like this. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our back wall. We are going to have a 2x4 wall in the back, a 2x6 wall in the front. And we're also going to extend the wall to sit on top of the roof sheathing on the 24 and 12 pitch roof on the main house we're going to have a 12 and 12 pitch on the garage and again a two by six wall here that's so that we can put a larger beam in for the garage door header and if you notice we're going to have double trimmers here you might even do better off with a post maybe a four by six and don't bother asking what size lumber i'm using in the video because i can't provide you with the lumber sizes you're going to need in your area. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know that. And you can always make the back wall a 2x6 if that's something you need to do. And in this video, I'm not going to have a door coming from the main unit here, the A-frame, into the garage. And part of the reason for that is the drop that I have here. You can see the difference in the floor. And it looks like it's a little bit over a foot. That's going to create a problem for our door opening. However, I'm not about to suggest that you can't modify it to create a door opening from this side of the building into the garage. Next up, let's go ahead and install our rafter ties. If you want to install ceiling joist, you can. We're going to use rafter ties here going in this direction and then some ties going in this direction. We're actually going to connect it to the rafters in the A-frame part of the home and run it all the way across to connect it to the exterior wall here to give it some support. We don't want the wall moving and these braces will help with that. And of course I have two of them flat, one here flat and one on edge to provide you with a different example there of how you might connect them along with how they might connect to the rafter ties. And here I had to attach a couple of blocks so that I could connect the brace that will be thoroughly nailed to the other support brace that will be sitting on top of the rafter ties. And you should attach all of this stuff together. End nail the flat board to the rafter tie, toe nail this board to the rafter tie, and again you can just end nail, drive some nails down through the 2x4 into the rafter tie and then drive some nails through this 2x4 into this 2x4 
and then some nails to connect the rafter here to the brace. And hopefully you don't need more information on that. I don't put a lot of nailing information in the videos. They're kind of more meant to provide you with design ideas. And I'm kind of going on the fact that you already know how to connect this stuff together. If you don't, I do have plenty of videos showing you how to connect everything together. And you can find those on our website. Let's go ahead and add our rafters. Again, a 12 and 12 roof pitch. And each one of the rafter ties will connect at four foot on center to a rafter so that we can get a nice connection all the way through here. Rafter ties are four foot on center. Our rafters are 16 inches on center. So every third rafter will connect to a rafter tie. And the rafter ties are used to prevent the walls from spreading and the ridge from sagging. And again, I do have more information on that at our website. So let's go ahead and put our fill in. Zoom into the bottom here to give you an idea how the rafters are going to be sitting on top of this wall here. And I went ahead and put my stud underneath the rafter since I'm going to have a single plate here. If you want to add another plate, then this wall stud doesn't need to be directly underneath the rafter. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the ridge. And I went ahead and had the ridge sit on top of our support boards here. You can always have the ridge sit on top of the sheathing, but I went ahead and did it so that I could show you how these support boards basically go up and kind of form a peak here, where if I was to run this through, and have it sit on top of the sheathing, I just wouldn't have this. And I would imagine some engineers would rather have the ridge sit directly on top of these support boards instead of the roof sheathing, especially if the ridge won't be sitting on top of a rafter. Next up, let's go ahead and head over to the other side, give you an idea how the sheathing is gonna kinda connect into here, run straight on through. And since this is a 45 degree angle, you could always shape the top of the ridge that wouldn't be too difficult to do with a 45 degree angle. And of course, how the rafters will blend in, create a flat surface through the fill area. And our blocks, we're gonna shape the top of the blocks. Again, not difficult to do with a 45 degree angle. However, it would be difficult to do for steeper roof pitches than a 12 and 12. And of course, our wall here, this will be our firewall. We're going to need to have a firewall to separate the garage from the living area. And if you're going to put a door from the garage into the living area, you're going to need a fire rated door also. And of course, a better view of how we're going to use these boards here to connect to the two by four wall framing studs to provide us with some more strength to prevent the wall from moving in and out. And you can always space these braces closer together. I have them at four foot on center. You could use 32 inches on center to make it a little stronger. Next up, let's go ahead and add our fascia board and take a look at the bottom here. And I wanna kind of give you an idea if you're going to install a soffit at the bottom and the soffit's going to come all the way across here, you're gonna end up with kind of a different section here. And there are a variety of different ways to finish that. I can go ahead and provide you with some of them. Just let me know if you need more information on that in the comment area. And of course, our lookouts are going to be spaced 32 inches on center, and our collar ties are going to be spaced 48 inches on center. And try to line the collar ties up if you can with the rafter ties. And we're going to move the collar tie to the other side so that we can build our wall here. So instead of having it on the right side, we're going to put it on the left side so that it doesn't interfere with our drywall. Otherwise, we would have to drywall around it. And I don't even know if you'd really need a collar tie on this one because we do have the wall. A back view of this area here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the gap between the bottom of the fascia board and the sheathing. This will allow us to install roofing materials underneath this section of the roof. And this might require you to leave some of the sheathing off so that the roofer can install the roofing materials underneath this area here. It's gonna be a little more difficult to do if you have the sheathing attached. A lot of times we'll just leave a board. We'll have a piece 
piece of the sheathing that might be this big here cut separately so that the roofer can remove this section install their roofing and then reattach the sheathing nail it off and then install their new roofing materials over this section and I don't know if I have a video on that go ahead and take a look at the other fascia board corner the blocks and how they're going to attach to the rafter tie. You could always run the block past and have the rafter tie sit behind the block if you're looking for a different type of assembly method. And of course our shaped fascia board. And we're going to have to do some notching here to make this side here blend in with this side here. Going to have to look something like this. Next up let's add the roof sheathing and start wrapping the video up here. Roof sheathing not too exciting. We've seen it before and for those of you wondering why I didn't have a full sheet here I was about three or four inches short at the top or in other words if I used a four foot wide piece of plywood or OSB here I would have needed to attach a three inch piece to the top of that. So for example instead of having four 48 inches here I had about 52 inches and if your engineer does not allow for something like that for example if they have a two foot minimum width then you're going to need to do something like this here and waste a little bit of roof sheathing and thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area